Cool. So what's happening? Hey, Julian came too. Yep. <clears throat> and I got to do a really interesting interview last night that you guys may appreciate. <clears throat> the uh, uh, last night, because Robert was here from, from Colorado staying with me. Um, and he took me to a screening of this new docu documentary that he shot the parts of the footage. He was in it. The guy next to me at the, at the the screening, he was in it. You know, it took me a minute to go. Wait a minute, this this like you know seventy five year old dude next to me is is like sipping. He I guess he brought a flask of uh, I think it was bourbon. I smelled it afterwards because he forgot his flask and I brought it to him later. It's, that's the guy next to me. <laughs> it's hilarious. But I got to interview the, um, the the daughter of the subject of this whole thing. Um, the guy's name was Danny Gatton. So in Rolling Stone magazine and all these other places, they touted him as the, the best guitarist in the world that you've never heard of. Because he was, he, he did like uh, rockabilly bands and he'd you know, do all kinds of different things. Eric Clapton said, I'll never go on the stage with this guy. He's too good. He'll make me look bad, right? And I, so I, I asked his daughter, because he's gone, how did he deal with the performance anxiety? Was he like the super cool cucumber before going on the stage and being perfect? I mean, the dude was perfect. Never, I mean, I knew he never made mistakes. Fastest fingers you've ever seen in your life. And she said, no, man. he was terrified. He was riddled with performance anxiety. As a matter of fact, the band members would have to get him to turn and face the audience because he faced the other direction because he was so, so nervous. Um, and the only reason he got on stage was because of his friends. Sort of, you know, you know, kind of giving him a little, you know, positive perspective on himself. You know, you got this, man, you're the best. Come on, you go and do it. Have fun. You got this. Um, and I, I just thought that was an interesting spin, you know, because a lot of the folks that I've interviewed like that don't have fear. Mm -hmm. Luke Akins was like, I don't get it. I don't have any fear. You know, um, the Flying Walendas, I interviewed those guys, you know, the, the acrobats, circus folk, you know. They said, no, we have no fear. We believe in Jesus. That's the, that was their take on it. Very interesting. But this guy who was, I mean, for real, I this you got to see this documentary. It's called The Humbler. It's not out yet. It will be. Unbelievable. He was the best. But you got to wonder, like, what made him the best? You know, he, he wasn't trying to be a star. He didn't want to be a star. He just wanted to play. <laughs> He just, you know, he enjoyed the transcendent, transcendent experience of this flow state experience, which is very similar to what we get in skydiving. There's a lot of parallels. Uh, so I don't know. It's very interesting. I, I'm hoping to connect with her again and do a further interview, um, you know, about her dad and, and, you know, what made him distinctive, what, what made him great. Because um, obviously proofs in the pudding, you know, you see the guy perform and you're like, wow. I mean, he would walk past you on the street. You would never, you know, with a John Deere hat on, it's a little bit chubby, just regular looking guy. But with these chubby fingers, like fat, like sausages. And yet, how cool is that? How, how good would he be without that performance anxiety? That's That's part of the question, isn't it? You know, we we tend to think of fear as something that you know we're a little ashamed of. You know, you know, you're supposed to be a man. You know, and actually, maybe it's fuel in the fire. It's you know, raising the house lights when you're really paying attention. But we know that when it goes too far, it breaks us down. We lose skill. We lose awareness. You know, we lose compassion and latitude for thinking. Um, and so, how do we find that that balance? You know, between being not scared enough where you get complacent, because a lot of these guys that have no fear die. I don't know if you guys know any, but I know a lot of people that were, you know, natural skydivers, just born into it. They just had that ability in every way and they didn't have the fear holding them back and they could do anything with 100 jumps. You're like, good God, man. And then there goes another one. There's another one. 
and uh, and so that we can't let it go to complacency. Um, and we also need to have, you know, that I, I feel like the reason why that somebody is especially nervous needs to be examined. You know, um, you know what's the underlying stuff. So anyway, very interesting. So cool to to meet these amazing people. You know, all these old rock and rollers, old rockabilly crowd. You know just incredible performers and thinking, well, how does this connect to skydiving? You know, how does the, the ability and not just skydiving, but all the, you know, kind of adventure stuff, um, recognizing the fear is going to be in the house. Um, and maybe we can use it. Maybe we can alchemize it, you know, and turning it and turn it into our best possible performance because we're scared because we don't want to screw up because we really want to do well. And those, those thoughts are related, but they they bifurcate. You know, I really don't want to screw up. Goes into a lot of visualizations of specifically how you might screw up, <laughs> paving the way to it, and then seeing that 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 the, all those tangent vectors that go in the direction of what you don't desire, reflected off, bounced off. You can go into well, what do I want to do? How do I want to do it? What's it going to feel like? And how do I let go of my ego? let go of my my distractions and just be here now in this moment of kicking ass you tuned one of these days i'm going to get a beer commercial out of this when you see what i'm getting ready to do yeah. go man it's boogie woogie time everybody <laughs> Drives me wild, she's my boogie boogie boogie. Yeah, my boogie boogie boogie. My boogie boogie boogie. Oh, he's all good, got a tree girl. She's the apple of my eye, a dream come true. The more love she gives, the more I can use. Lights alone, I'm holding her tight. In my arms, I'm in paradise, cause she's my boogie boogie boogie. Yeah, my boogie boogie boogie. Boogie boogie boogie. Oh, he's all good, got a tree girl. Good time mama loves to rock and roll She can do it all both body and soul A rainbow rider when the sips are white To the pitch to step looking down and out of my boogie 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 Yeah my boogie 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 Honky donky country girl
I don't know about you all, but I'm thirsty. Hold on. We realize this isn't legal, but who cares? I'm old enough to drink. And a long day. Your brand could be here. Sneaky, wasn't That's as high as it goes. She's my book.
Thank you so much.